always striving uh, to get to the highest level you can every day. Hard work, commitment, and simply being able to take coaching. Taking coaching every day. Sometimes the coaching is hard, but you take that coaching every day because that coach sees something in you more than you see in yourself. You always give him more. You always give him more till you retire. You continue to try to give more. Um, and you never can seem to give enough. That's what it takes to be the best. Tracy Ann was a magnificent four time Hall of Famer from Gainesville, Florida, who went on to become a legend at Georgia Southern and a 13 year pro in the CFL. His successes greatly inspire athletes today. Here is his story. Tracy Hand grew up in High Springs, a small town in Gainesville, Florida. There he grew up with a large family. Tracy went to Santa Fe High School, but he was not always a quarterback. How to become a quarterback? Coach Buck, Coach Warren Buck, pulled me aside one day. I was playing receiver. He pulled me aside one day and said, hey, we're going to change you into a quarterback. I'm not sure what he was looking at and when he looked at me, that he would see a quarterback in me. But he said that, you know, you're gonna be on our team, you're gonna be our quarterback. So Coach Buck would have pulled me aside, took me out of PE, and taught me how to be a quarterback, warm up my high school JV coach in varsity basketball. I mean I was what I was looking for is the first thing I looked to see that he could he could throw the football. You know, he seemed like he could throw the football some. And uh, he had good feet. And a, a lot of times people don't realize this how important it is for a quarterback and all Was a star. When he came to Georgia Southern, he was fifth on the depth chart. Uh, coming in, I was a late signee, so um, when I came, when I arrived at camp in August, not much communication between myself and the school. Just knew it was a full scholarship, but I was on my way to play quarterback. When I 
arrived at camp, um, I looked at the depth chart and I saw myself fifth on the depth chart. At the time it was, you know, it was tough uh, when I looked at it and just really didn't think I, I didn't think I was that bad. I mean, I knew guys that signed before me, but I didn't think I was that bad. But as um, we got to practice and as we got into the flow, a couple guys got homesick, so they went home and I ended up number two, number three. Um, before camp ended, and then was able to work my way from there into the starting lineup. I was there at Georgia Southern, I mean, Georgia Southern's football team, which was dormant for many years, um, came back into play. We joke about it now um, because at the time I was on the women's basketball team, and it seems like they started taking things away from us. <laughs> get ready for this football team that was going to come in. I must admit that I pulled and I tugged against the grain because I liked my two pairs of tennis shoes and my Gatorade and extra practice gear and all of that stuff. But the word was out. The buzz was on. Georgia Southern's um, dormant football team was going to be coming back to life and everybody had to give a little something. As it turns out, I gave a little something, but I probably got more back than what I gave. I watched Tracy and those other football players, they came out there and I watched them bust their butts in practice. I liked the game. I didn't know Tracy at the time, but um, I liked the idea that we were going to have a football team. He went on to be the starting quarterback for the Eagles and would go on to win two consecutive FCS national championships with the Eagles. We're only in their second and third year in the FCS. It was interesting because I went from being a backup to a starter, um, you know, not really worried about what the start of the game looked like to thinking about what defenses I got to check against. So the biggest thing was my off-field preparation. Um, it changed my antenna was up. I was really in tune with the game plan. Whereas when I was a backup, I wasn't in tune with the game plan as much as I probably should have been. But being the starter, you get all the reps. Um, you get to watch the tape and practice up your mistakes and get them corrected. So being a starter that first year really uh, made me really in tune with the game plan. Uh, so that will be ready to play when the game started. Um, they never had to teach them how to fight and how to scuffle. Um, that stuff, he had heart, I mean, tenacity, that stuff he already had. They just needed to teach him the game and to be a student of the game, which he was. He learned that game. He learned those positions. I mean, I'm, 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 I'm watching this guy. I got to go study film, you know, and he'd go and study film. He said it was his job to know where everybody was going to be at any given time, and that's what he did. He knew that, and it was, it was just exciting to see a young man who felt like, you know, if we're in, in given situations, I know what play to call. And that, and that was different because you're coming from an age where the coaches call pretty much, especially for the small schools, they call all the plays. But he had shown over time that he knew what he was doing and he knew the game because he was a student of it. It was exciting to watch him. He ended his college career earning first team All-American and holding many records. To this day, he holds more than 20 game season and career records at Georgia Southern and knows 21 playoff game records. Ham sits at number six in all-time rushing yards at Georgia Southern with 3,212, first in passing with 5,757, first in total offense with 8,969, and first in passing touchdowns with 34. During his senior year, he was in the top 20 in the nation in pass efficiency scoring, total offense, and rushing. To him, one of the most prolific quarterbacks during my era in the late 80s. Uh, Trey Ham clearly was one of the most humble and special gifted athletes that I've ever seen play. As an opponent of his, I watched him play on several occasions. Outstanding. I often wondered uh, how he would do uh, at another level, but as I watched him play, it was clear to me that he would be exceptional on any level. The best option quarterback I've ever seen Clearly, way before his time. Had he been a quarterback in the 2000s now, it would be an unbelievable feat. Uh, outstanding career in the Canadian Football League, over 10 years plus. Outstanding athlete. Really enjoyed watching him play.
College career as a whole, man, it was a fantastic experience. Uh, we were able to accomplish things as a group of young men, being the first recruiting class at Georgia Southern. Uh, some of the goals and achievements that we accomplished were just phenomenal. Uh, being able to win back-to-back uh, -back national championship on the road, uh, some of the experiences were great. And then just watching this institution grow from nowhere to be able to be a thriving, uh, well-respected football community. I always had good high school football, but didn't have good college football because of the bus for Southeast Georgia. So uh, my college experience was a great experience. I couldn't think of no better place that I'd want to spend my college career experience and enjoy something. Ham went on to be drafted in the ninth round by the Los Angeles Rams. Well, leading up to the draft was interesting because teams were coming in working us out and really we had no benchmark of what that looked like. I mean, when I looked at other schools, they had previous, obviously, guys drafted. They trained for a specific workout. Uh, we were, uh, we played up until December the 21st. They played the championship and then we started getting ready for the draft. I went to the East-West All-Star game and so uh, then being in those environments, then I started learning how to work out, getting ready for the draft, and started doing draft-specific workouts. Um, but we had no roadmap here at Georgia Southern. We was kind of playing it by ear. And I just happened to be one of the first guys to come through and went through the process. And so being uh, talking to uh, the scouts and the combine, and then the East-West All-Star game, all those things were interesting uh, pathways to me getting drafted, uh, talking with different teams, teams who said they were going to take me. But ultimately, the Rams took me in the ninth round. And so with that, I went out to Los Angeles and playing running back. Behind Eric Dickerson and Charles White uh, as the third team running back, head coach John Robinson. And so I uh, did that mini camp. Just didn't fit well within that mini camp. Didn't fit well in the scheme of playing with my hand on the ground. At the time, my agent was a guy named David Ware, who was in negotiation with the Canadian League. And the Edmonton Eskimos had my rights. So after I came out of mini camp, I realized that I, I knew I just I was a quarterback and I wanted to go to Canada to play quarterback. And so I left mini camp, uh, did return to the Rams, migrated to the Canadian League, and spent 13 years in the Canadian Football League. Ham started as the third string quarterback for the Edmonton Eskimos, sitting behind two Hall of Famers in Matt Dunnigan and Damon Allen. Because Matt Dunnigan left and Damon Allen got injured, Trace was next in line to take the throne. He passed for 2,840 yards and ran for another 628. First pro season, first starting game in the whole season. This first start, my first starting game were, uh, were tough because I was getting used to a new system. Uh, it was unexpected to play at the time. Damon Allen was hurt uh, the first, the second quarter of the first game. And so here I was, the new kid on the block after my second year thrust into the starting lineup. We had to go on the road to a tough Saskatchewan team and it was on the road again to the Ottawa team. So it was a tough track, you know, it was a tough track early, but I think that's what make, make you, that the experience makes you study harder and work harder. Uh, so once I got through the first few games and understanding what it was going to be like, it, it, got, it got better because I was able to study it and, and work a little harder for things that I, that I liked. In 1989, he won the CFL's Most Outstanding Player Award in leading the Eskimos to a 16-2 record, throwing for 4,366 yards on 268 completions out of 517 attempts with a 30-18 to touchdown interception ratio, and he became the first CFL passer to rush over 1,000 yards with 1,005 on 125 carries and with 10 touchdowns. With all of these accomplishments, they still lost to the Saskatchewan Rough Riders in the divisional finals. The Rough Riders would go on to win the Grey Cup. Ham would then have another 1,000 yard rushing season and throw for 4,286 yards and lead the Eskimos to the Grey Cup. Unfortunately, they were dismantled by the Winnipeg Blue Bombers by a score of 55 to 10. I remember still having nightmares now about it. Uh, one thing about football, you don't forget the, those defeats that really hurt you that just, they become a part of you. And that great cup, Winnipeg at the end of the day just had a better football team than we had. 
we have played a fantastic semifinal game on the road against Calgary. And I played really well, I had a really good scheme that worked against them. Got to the championship game and just could not contain them, could not keep them out, we could not. Everything that could go wrong went wrong. And it was my first championship as a starter, as a quarterback in that league. And so it didn't go nowhere near what I thought a championship should go like. But the experience made me better, the experience made me tougher. Um, and then at the end, we just got beat by a better team. He will repeat his statistics the following year. But in 1992, Hammond endured a nagging injury throughout the season. Well, injuries are just a part of the game that nobody likes to talk about. And I think as a player, you know you're going to get nicked, bruises, sometimes hurt, sometimes got to sit out. And you're always trying to find that fine line of when I'm too hurt to help the team. Or am I injured? Can I treat it? Can I play at 90%? Is that good enough? And so that's a fine line that all players will look for is how to measure when they're hurt and when they're injured. And to me, I've, you know, I've gone through several seasons. I think every season we just try to make it through being healthy in the playoffs. But at the end of the day, um, you don't hear a whole bunch of talk about injuries because people understand those are part of the game as players. And you play, if you're on the field, you suit it up, then you're able to, you know what I'm saying, you're 100% ready to play. So that's just a part of the game. Getting banged up is a part of it. And as a player, we just deal with it. He moved on to the Toronto Argonauts for the 1993 season and suffered through a 3 and 15 record. He threw for only 2147 yards and ran for 605. When I got traded to Toronto, it was a uh, Edmonton. I just I thought I just got settled in and becoming a pretty decent quarterback in Edmonton. I had experienced a lot of success early, but I just was immature. You know, I hadn't reached my maturity level at, as a quarterback in Edmonton. I still had so much learning to do when I and when I when I was traded to Toronto in the eighth or eighth, sixteen player trade, um, it was what I thought was a breath of fresh air. And then I got situated into an offense that just didn't suit my style. I knew the run and shoot package, receiver wise, offensive wise, but I never played the game from three yards off the line of scrimmage. And so it was a difficult offense for me. I started to finish two games that year and so it was never it was really you couldn't tell what type of quarterback I was. Um, I knew I was better than a 3 or 15 uh, quarterback. I had proven it. And then, you know, just going through that year really matured me as a quarterback because you never want to be so conceited to think the only way a team can win is if you're on the field. Um, I really had to dig down into uh, the, the mental aspect of the game, being a good teammate, being a leader even when I wasn't playing. And so I think that was one of my better years uh, maturity-wise was in Toronto sitting out games, watching the game from a different perspective. My body got a chance to heal up. Um, but at the end of the day, it was a tough season, and I don't think Toronto ever got to see nowhere near the type of player that I was playing for them as opposed to playing against them um, as I finished my career. With the CFL expanding into the United States, Ham started a new chapter by joining the Baltimore Stions in 1994. He had another tremendous season, throwing for 4,318 yards and rushing for 613. He led his team to the Grey Cup where they were defeated by the BC Lions. Going to Baltimore, after leaving Toronto, going to Baltimore was a, just truly a fresh and fresh air. Playing for Don Matthews. Uh, Don Matthews had a saying to me, he goes, uh, only time you're going to come out, Trace, if I see a bone showing. So Don just showed a lot of confidence in me as a player. And I think it, no matter what stage you are in your career, you want your coach to have confidence in you. Don showed a lot of confidence in me. He get back to just playing the game free, calling the games again, you know, putting players in position to make them successful. And then we had a very, very good football team. We had some of the best uh, players I played against in the CFL, played with in the CFL. And to be able to go to back-to-back -back championships, uh, the one against Vancouver, the one out of Vancouver against the BC Lions in 94, had a chance to win. I didn't play particularly well. Um, I thought we... Uh, I thought we had too many turnovers, and uh, the ball just didn't bounce our way. To be able to come back the next year, which our slogan was unfinished business, to be able to get back and to go to Saskatchewan uh, outside in the frigid winters of November in Saskatchewan and play a great cup was what it, it just embodied what the league was about, just tough, hard-nosed football. And um, to be able to go there and then win MVP, that game, 
they could have picked several people in MVP. They could have picked Chris Wright, who had a, a punt return to start the game off. OJ McGinnis had a spectacular game with a block uh, punt for a touchdown. Uh, we thought Alfred played well. I thought Mike Pringle played well. I thought the offensive line, we had a, a lot of guys that played really well. And for me to be selected MVP, uh, like I said, any number of guys could have gotten it. But that was one of the, um, the most enjoyable years I'd had in the CFL. The Steins would soon move to Montreal and become the Alouettes. There he played alongside Mike Pringle, which made the rushing attack for the Alouettes rather lethal. In his career from 1997 to 1999, Ham accumulated 40,534 passing yards, which currently ranks him 7th all-time. He threw 4,943 times with 2,687 completions, 164 interceptions, and 284 touchdowns. His 8,043 rushing yards currently puts him 10th all-time and 2nd among quarterbacks, behind only Damon Allen. In 1992, he was inducted into the Georgia Southern Hall of Fame, in 2007, he was inducted into the College Football Hall of Fame. In 2010, the Canadian Football Hall of Fame. And in 2012, the Georgia Sports Hall of Fame. Going into the Hall of Fame, uh, started with my college Hall of Fame at Georgia Southern. Uh, was just, when you think about all the athletes that come out of Georgia Southern, that were just fantastic through all the sports. Just some great, great players. And to be mentioned in that Hall of Fame with those guys is definitely a huge honor in the tree. Uh, and then going into the College Hall of Fame, where the numbers are even greater and the number of uh, Hall of Fame members are even smaller, it was a, a truly an honor that, not only for me, but I think for our whole community, Georgia Southern, my hometown, High Spring, everybody really uh, kind of you know, was the ending point for me where with all the people had uh, put it into my career to be able to go into the College Hall of Fame was a real treat. The Canadian Hall of Fame was special because it got a chance, some of the conferences that nobody ever seen, the games that nobody ever seen from, uh, from my family to my hometown, to the people of Georgia Southern. Uh, and then to going to the Georgia State Hall of Fame was definitely eyes on the Fed K. Uh, we look at the people that through the state, some of the Hall of Famers that it's produced is definitely an exclusive group of people. And it's just anytime you get that honor, it's truly an honor when you represent a group of people that shared it in, in the years you played. I mean, when I look at it from high school to college to pro, um, there's so many people that touched my athletic career and my personal character uh, that made me the type of player I was. And certainly without the input of all those different people, I wouldn't be a Hall of Famer. Anytime you leave a legacy that you want to pass on, I think I think Mike Curry told me his best. He always used to tell me, Ham, you can't cheat the game. And I think if I would pass on anything to my to my kids, uh, anybody I come into contact with, is that you can't cheat the game. You can't cheat the game from your workouts to the classroom to building your body to understanding how it works. You just can't cheat the game. And I, I just felt like that every day you go out, you got to give it your best. You got to participate at the high level. You have to compete in every aspect of the game. You have to compete when you talk about the knowledge of the game. You have to compete when you talk about the physicalness of the game. You have to compete in every aspect. So for me, I would want what I, would, what I want my legacy to be is uh, that he was very competitive. He played hard every game, every practice, and he never cheated the game. In my in my eyes, the fans adore him. He's on ES, uh, well, TSN, they didn't have ES, but TSN in Canada. Uh, you still go to Georgia Southern, and you got the uh, his jerseys hanging up. Your dad is an icon, and it's, 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 all, it's empowering, really, because you're saying, hey, you know, his blood is running through my veins. He did what he did with limited resources. So why can't I be greater? Why can't I do things, you know, at a higher level than he did? Maybe not you know, necessarily on the field, but... Uh, in another aspect of life, why can't I influence someone in a positive manner, you know, and it's, it's empowering. It makes you want to say, hey, I want to pass this stuff on to my son, you know. I want to do something that my son could be proud of because it's a great feeling as a son, you know, looking at your dad do the things he did. I want to pass on that legacy and tradition, you know, and I think about that, you know, as a, as a military member, you know, 
I have that I have that name on the on my left breast po uh, left breast pocket, you know. You know, and I I have pride in that. He's instilled a sense of pride in me. You know, and that's something that no one can take away, you know, from me. You know, when things get down and out, I say, hey, I'm gonna make it because I'm a ham. You know, that's that's what that's what my motivation is. And that just comes from watching him and seeing all that he's done. So, you know, I love him to death. You know, I couldn't ask for a better father. He grew and he grew and he grew as a not just as a football player, but as a person, as a leader. And he just always believed, I can do this. And when given the opportunity, he did it, and he never once looked back. Never. I, I mean, just, I admired him, because I knew the man personally, and then I knew the football player. I knew them both. And so it was exciting to watch Tracy as a college football player, and then how he parlayed that into a professional football player. I mean, just watching the, the highlights of his career is really exciting. Seeing him at the Hall of Fame, because yes, he has more than one of those. Um, listening to his accolades, just wonderful. Um, so his career as a whole, I think that he achieved, I think he took his career to the max. Like some people say, oh, I think they should have given you a chance in the NFL. I think he got his chance where he was supposed to have his chance, and that's the CFL. And I'm sure he won't take anything for that journey. I think he enjoyed it. I think it fulfilled him. Um, you know, I'm, I'm just, ex I'm still excited about what he has accomplished, what he has achieved. Uh, the name is synonymous with Georgia Southern and Irv Russell. <laughs> Those are all synonymous. If you, you go places in the United States and sometimes even not. Sometimes you're out of the United States and they hear that name and it's a household name. Um, so it's, it was really exciting to watch him grow over the years when he was in that, that arena and the accomplishments, I just wonderful, just wonderful. But he is a wonderful person. Couldn't have happened to a better guy. Yeah. So I think for a long time, when you hear Georgia Southern, you will hear Tracy Ham, you will hear Hambone, you will hear Irk Russell, all of that. I'm just happy because I was there. Go Georgia Southern. Um, as a father, uh, when you have sons, you always believe that one of them going to be a football player. As a football player, if I imagine if I was a basketball player, I would think one of my sons would be a basketball player, or even a baseball, whatever sport it is. You kind of have dreams of your uh, your son passing on that legacy of being uh, everything you would want in coach. Yeah, I used to yourself being coach and as a player. And so having Caleb, uh, having watching him grow into student athlete that he's going into, his work habits. A lot of things that had my dad coached me, I thought he would have taught me. I just happened to be taught these things by Coach Buff. Uh, but those are the principles that uh, I like to see. I've seen in him when I watch him play, when you watch his approach to the game. Uh, I like his, uh, his mental toughness. Uh, and as a father, that's what you look for. You just want to see that your son competes at a high level. He's mentally tough and he physically understands the game when I watch him play. Those are some of the characteristics that I see. Uh, I know, I know he wants to be better than his dad. I know, I know. I hear him all the time. Uh, so the thing I'm always looking for when you're talking about being the best is, you know, you ain't got your team in big ball games. You know, look at the ball games you got your team in. And then in those big ball games, I'm talking directly to Caleb now, in the big ball games. Stay in the moment. Uh, do you get outside the moment? If the moment gets too big. So what I look for, Caleb, I look for. I see in him. I see characteristics of uh, him having an opportunity to be a really, really good football player. He's been a fabulous student athlete.
Still like to sign. Love you.